Hey sportsman, John Bergsman here with the Fisherman's Digest. We've got another edition of this week's Hot Bites Report. Some of these reports are gonna surprise you, but guess what? Fishing is silly all over the state of Michigan. We've got five great reports. We're starting right here in the background. That's Mackinac Island. That's right, we're here in the port of St. Ignace. We spent a day on the water, 16 keeper fish, pink salmon, steelhead, lake trout, awesome fishing going right now. The pinks are moving from downstate up through this waterway on their way up to Detour Passage. Stay tuned for that report. We've got an awesome report from Captain Nick Dode over down in the Huron to Vermilion area, again of Lake Erie. We're gonna slide over to Manistee and Ludington where they've got huge kings pouring up the rivers right now. Every time there's a north wind, more kings are going up the river. Then we're gonna slide across up just a little bit north and we're gonna to go to Alpena region in Hubbard Lake. Hubbard Lake, we got a great late season, late, late August walleye trolling bite going on and we're gonna end the week right there in the Sault Ste. Marie in the upper St. Mary's where Captain Ken Smijinski says, fish are biting all over the place. Stay tuned. So our first report of the day is right here in St. Ignace, Michigan. We fished the Straits area on the lee side of Boblo Island. We had a pretty good west wind today, so we had to go and hide a little bit on the, on the other side of Boblo Island. We started right at the north tip, trolled all the way down to Lighthouse Point. Then we thought, what the heck, we'll go all the way to Lafayette Point. We trolled the whole back side of the island. We ended up with 16 keepers today, nine lake trout, five pink salmon, a really nice steelhead. I think we had a king on too. We had a real ripper go, but as usual, kings, you can never be sure you land them. But fishing was awesome. So how are we doing it? We will run a combination of riggers and divers and coppers. Those three presentations. We were targeting fish. Uh, the coppers were basically the, one fit, the 125s were good and the 200s were good. So that tells you they're maybe 30, 40 down. On our divers, we were di our low divers were set at about 75. Our high divers set at about 120. They were doing good. We caught fish on divers all day. We did have a couple early bigger lake trout on the riggers, but the riggers went quiet after morning. The best colors seemed to be orange, base orange spoons on chrome. That was, that was really the recipe today. It didn't matter what we put out as long as it was on a chrome spoon and it had some good amount of orange going to it. They were biting that pretty good. Speed was about 2.5 to 2.7 miles an hour. So get yourself up here. The pinks are just starting now to head north. They're still catching them down over in Presque Isle. So that's quite a bit south of us. So there's gonna be a good couple weeks here where pinks and other species are gonna be pouring through the Straits area. So get on up here. It's awesome fishing. St. Ignace is an awesome little town. You can take the star line and head right out there to Mackinac Island. Have yourself a great day. This is our RRH210. This is a rod holder, all welded oval base. It turns and rotates 45 degrees each way, side to side. But in this case, I'm actually using it in the front side of my track. Got it in there, turned 45 degrees forward, and it's a really nice, stout, all aluminum rod holder. So we're using this as a net holder right in the front to give us a real good, solid, secure place to put a net. RRH210. So our next report is Captain Nick Dode. You know, he's been over in that Huron to Vermilion area uh, of Lake Erie now for a couple of weeks on the weekends only. And if you get a chance to get out with Nick, he is whacking fish. So he's catching three and a half to five pound walleyes all in that 50 to 60 foot depth range. And he's catching them real fast, able to get a whole boat limit every single time he goes out. Now, obviously, he's picking his weather a little bit. On those big blow days, you might have to spend a day on shore, or you just might have to reschedule your trip. But if you get good weather right now, here on to Vermilion is, and, and all the way to Lorraine has been lights out for the fishing. So how's he been doing it? He's been doing it with a combination of snap weights or, or uh, uh, tadpoles or divers, you know, uh, dipsy divers, to get those spinners down into that upper third to mid depth and those fish have been coming fast and furious there in that Lorraine to Huron area. So 
It's, it, can be, it can be worms, it can be spoons, it can be bandits just straight behind the board. It doesn't seem to matter. What seems to matter is you've got to have your lures in that 20 to 30 foot zone to catch a lot of fish. So it's going heavy right now in, in the, the Ohio regions of Lake Erie, so get yourself down there and take advantage of it. You know, every fishing boat needs a place to put rods, store rods, and have rod holders to go fishing, and the Anger Quest Family Fish has that in spades. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and here on the Family Fish, I'm going to show you the integrated arch. We've got the ability to put up to five adjustable track tech rod holders on each side so we can run offshore planer boards. We've got rod storage across the top, the ability to put in lights, radar, VHF radio antennas, and any accessories we need to turn this Family Fish into a hardcore fishing boat. Check out this and all the other great features on AngerQuest at your local AngerQuest dealer. So we're going to run up to Sault Ste. Marie back over the bridge and talk with Kenny Smijinski who tells me that there's all kinds of fishing happening on the St. Mary's River. So you've got main river walleyes either on channel edges with bouncers or jigging or back in bays. Uh, you can pull snap weights and spinners over top of those. Northern pike have been biting great. The salmon are starting to head into the river and most importantly this time of year we're probably on the early stage, but the first few pinks are going to start to show up anytime. And when that happens, you're going to have two or three weeks of hot and heavy pink action salmon. Why? Because the pinks are heavier out in the lake than I have ever seen them. I've talked with Steve Hubert. I've talked with guys that fish that sunrise side, that north shore, that northeast corner. That's where most of the pinks spend their time. Uh, they get out into Lake Huron and they feed in that general area before they head back up the river, the mature males to spawn and females. So guess what? They've seen more pinks this year than they've ever seen in their careers. Every single one to the man has told me that. So I would expect a phenomenal St. Mary's River bite for pink salmon this fall. So you're gonna to need to get your room and you need to get up there because I think the fishing's gonna be stellar. Now, if you're looking to just catch fish in general, Kenny can get you out there, there's some really good northern pike, you know, bay fishing going on right now, as well as walleye fishing. And as the season progresses, those fish that are right down there in the south half of Minuskong to detour are really going to start setting up strong, and you're going to get that hot fall fishing that goes on where you throw a few muskies into the mix as well. But right now, Sault Ste. Marie has got great fishing going on, so get yourself up there. Check it out if that's what interests you. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. So our next report is an Alpena report, and it's from an inland lake. We've heard some really good reports that we've got a good uh, spinner trolling bite going on or shallow crankbait trolling bite going on main lake that's over the deep water. You know we've had an entire month of really above normal temperatures and when that happens on big walleye lakes typically you get walleyes that'll slide out to cool themselves off and they will spend the whole month of August in the mid depths suspended over deep water where they can sink down and, and get away from the, not only the sunlight that we've had a ton of, but also just the surface temperatures. So how are guys doing it? Well, they're pulling tadpoles or they're pulling snap weights and spinners. Again, the depth varies day to day. On cloudy days, they might be up 10 foot down. On those really bright sunny days, they might be 10 foot down maybe for the first hour or two. And then they're gonna drop 15, even 20 down. So you really have to use your Garmin to make sure that you're staying on top of those fish as far as the marks are concerned. What's a good area of the lake? Not all the basin area is productive. How do you know when a basin area is productive? When you're seeing bait in that five to 15 foot range, when you're seeing bait on your screen, lots of clutter, that's when you know there's bait fish present. 
Typically when there's bait fish present over deeper water, you're going to have suspended walleyes hanging somewhere in the area. And so what, you're, what I basically try to do is set all my setups to be on the bottom side of the bait. That's what I use as my determining factor. So if I'm seeing bait 5 to 10 or 12 down, I'm setting my lures 10, 11, 12 down so that they're close to the predators, so that the predators see my bait and they don't have to fight through a whole bunch of the evasive baits when they're feeding. So that's a typical way. Really normal colors of spinner blades and crankbaits, real natural colors. Portage, I'm not Portage, but uh, Hubbard is a super clean, clear water lake. So you're going to want to use, if you're using crankweights, you're going to want to use blues and whites and natural colors. You know, if you're going to use a spinner blade, you're going to use the blues or the, again, real natural colors. Nothing really super loud. That's what seems to be working really well. So get yourself up to Alpena region. There's not just that going on in Alpena, but that's a seasonal bite that I wanted to make you aware it's happening right now. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127, north of St. John's. So we're going to take you to our last stop, which we've talked about a little bit here over the last couple weeks, but it's just too good to not talk about. So the whole shoreline right now, Frankfurt is hot for kings. I mean, the last couple days have been absolute stupidity. Slide south, you've got the same thing going on in Manistee and Ludington. And what's going on is that the big kings are staging in front of all the major rivers. Basically, you can look at a map of Michigan, and if you've got a major river inletting into your area, you're going to have big kings either staging in front, right in front of the pier heads, and coming in every time there's a little bit of a north wind or a little bit of a northwest wind, or you've already got river fish, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about right now. You know, Captain Ryan Bullard from up in Ludington and Captain Alex Bialik up in Manistee both spend a lot of time on the river once those fish come in from the lake. Now, they're still out on the lake. They both told me they're still lake fishing, but it's not going to be very long before those guys are going to be in their river boats having the, some of the hottest action. If you have never king salmon fished in the river for those hot, king salmon in the month of September, you have got to put it on your list of things to do. Imagine catching a 20 or 25 pound king salmon in a river, not out in the main lake with all that room to fight the fish, no, in a river. Well, that's what those salmon are up there to spawn. They're very catchable at this time of year. So you just got to get yourself with an experienced charter captain who knows right where those fish hold and they can put you on a casting and, and reeling bite or whatever presentation suits your fancy, I'm sure that they can fish a lot of different presentations. But right now, for the next month, you're going to see out of sight king salmon fishing on the major rivers throughout the whole western side of Michigan. So get with your favorite charter captain. Make sure if he does river trips, you get on his books early because this is going to fill up fast because as all of you know from listening to me and also hearing the other reports, this has been a stellar season for big kings, really jumbo-sized kings in front of all these major ports. So the river fishing is going to be out of sight. So hey, thanks for joining us here today. You know, we had an awesome day on the water right up here under the bridge and off on the edge of Bablo Island. Thanks so much for St. Ignace for hosting us and, and, and we had a great time just, just foraying around. Thanks a lot to my buddy Travis for spending a day on the water with me. He took a day off of work and we're really appreciative of him doing that and showing us just a little bit about what he knows of the Straits area. Hey, if you've got a great bite that you need to let us know about, just get a hold of us at Fisherman's Digest and we'll see if we can accommodate you and, and get you on the water. Otherwise, if you're looking for great fishing reports, head to fishermansdigest.com and uh, you'll be able to get all of our fishing reports right there on the website. In the meantime, get outdoors. The North Country in Michigan is open for business. It is a lot of fun. I'm seeing all kinds of traffic here in the Greater Bridge area and from all my Northern customers, they seem to be busy, busy, busy. So get on up North, have a great time, get out on the water or get outdoors. Either way, thanks for joining us on this week's Fishing Report.